Last week we had a general introduction to medical informatics and how it can be used in various settings and this week we dived deeper into personal informatics, more specifically health tracking apps and why they might be used, why they might be abandoned. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the personal tracking as lived informatics app by John Rooksby. And um, I think it brought up some really good points about how these apps aren't being used in a logical, organized fashion, but more so as um, more in a social and collaborative way, which I would agree with. And actually one of the quotes that I really agree with, or I'm gonna paraphrase, but um, something that I agreed with is that people don't start being more healthy because they're using these apps. They generally start using these apps because they wanna be more healthy. And I would definitely agree with that from my personal experience. I have used MyFitnessPal, I've used um, cycle tracking apps, and it's always been from um, an intrinsic motivation for me to get better. And, and when I have been motivated, I've done a lot better, seen more progress than when I've just used the apps because I've, I had already been using them before versus I decided to start using them because I have motivation. Let's talk about health modern devices and technology for a moment. In theory, they record things that are they normally can't be measured, things ranging from heart rate, calories, blood sugar, and miles walked. It's really good in theory, since like they record things that normally can't be measured and provide information to doctors that may need the information. Uh, however, the main concern with the public with this information is just the fact that the information being stored, we have no idea who really has access to them, or even where this information is being stored. Things such as like turning on a GPS for tracking your miles walked, uh, Having your location available to a database or even a particular person is sort of a breach of privacy and can be really concerning for the public. Overall, technology, although it could be helpful for health concerns and whatnot, it should be used in moderation and be practical in the sense that it doesn't really dominate or intrude with our basic lives, and but must be there just to serve as an additional source of information, something more reliable but not uh, too intruding. It's surprising the most from reading the article from Moby Health News were some of the possible consequences of having access to increased data. I already figured that having that much data can become a privacy issue, but I hadn't really considered many of the other effects and possible outcomes. I had never really considered what type of future devices will become available that are wearable. When thinking of the term wearable, I really only thought about smartwatches. That term can clean, include many other form factors. Another thing I hadn't really considered was the possibility that wearables can create a disparity in health services. Within the US itself, not everyone is going to be able to afford something like a smartwatch, but as they become more popular and used more frequently as a health device, it may become expected as a tool when visiting a doctor or receiving health services. So those that can't really afford those type of devices are gonna receive lower quality treatment possibly because they don't have that tool that has that may become central to those health services so i believe that collecting health data using smartphone and smart watches do benefit our physical mental condition these collected data is much more uh, valuable than just going to occasional checkups seeing doctors but uh, there will be the cost of privacy and the difficulty and so their personal data is however these data a personal record of someone such as blood pressure their diet their you know carry intakes etc as a people concerned about the privacy personally i think these data is only like valuable to them or company like health insurance company and uh, has this article argue about the fairness of healthcare that not everyone is having access to these smart devices. However, healthcare is in many country in general are not fair to begin with. So I believe that these devices do still offer some type of healthcare at the cheaper price of the cost rather, but it's only give people some head up of what is going on to their health, not to prevent it. This week's topics center around the idea of lived informatics and self-tracking. The articles and lectures discuss the impact that activity trackers and sensors have on daily life and society as a whole. Before reading the articles, I had the opinion that this trend of activity trackers and self-tracking is a good thing. Overall, I believed that it would bring a positive impact on health and healthcare. However, I began to find that there could be some negative consequences that could arise due to the trend of self-tracking and the amount of wearable technology available out right now. 
One scenario I thought of that could have potentially large impacts is the idea of healthcare insurance providers using wearable or tracker data in order to determine how much they charge their members. If the company deems that you are at high risk for disease, then they could charge you more than someone that, someone that they deem healthy. This goes against the idea of equal and accessible healthcare for all. Also, I think due to the lack of regulations surrounding these technologies, the data they could provide could be inaccurate and could lead to some consequences. This could lead to unhealthy individuals being deemed healthy or doctors misdiagnosing their patients and getting into arguments with their patients over their diagnoses. Um, however, if there is enough regulation by lawmakers and oversight by companies producing these devices, I think these problems could be avoided.